All right, y'all. So we're back with another Bitcoin video. And this one, we're going to be talking about Michael Saylor's bold, bold prediction of where Bitcoin is actually going to go to, which is crazy. It's massive um, because it's in the millions. And for Bitcoin, to, for him to believe Bitcoin is going to be worth millions a coin, that that's a, that's a bold statement to make. Um, the more that Bitcoin starts to get accepted. We're hearing presidential candidates talk about it. We're hearing other politicians start to speak about it. And we really understand the magnitude of what's going on with crypto, what's going on with Bitcoin. It's not a shocking thing. Like We know that we're early in this space. That's why most of us is here. We know the opportunity here. I know that sometimes the investments in meme coins, but it's not really, can't, can't really be called an investment, but you know, the, the dabbling in meme coins and stuff like that, that takes the forefront because stuff, crazy things is always happening on a daily basis in that. But when it comes down to the, the big projects, the, the big, you know, cryptocurrencies, the main things, and also the, like the AI technology and stuff like that, I think that, that that's more so slept on because it's not. It's not as fast moving as a meme coin and meme coins is really just community driven. So obviously that's going to have more hype and stuff in the short term. But overall, in the long term, it's some real money to be made here. If you're if you're really patient, it's like it is like when Warren Buffett was stocking up on Coca-Cola, more than likely during the time when he was stocking up on Coca-Cola, there was some stuff moving faster for those moments for short periods of time. Maybe um in the in months to years, like there was stuff that he could have made more money on in the short term, but we see what played out in the long term. So if you're getting in Bitcoin right now and holding for the next 20 years, you stand to gain a lot of money if a lot of this stuff plays out. So yeah, that's what we're going to be diving into, Michael Saylor's um, point of view. Let me know if you all actually believe that this is going to come to pass or if you think that maybe that's too far, that's too big of a stretch. Um, I think that I, I think that's 100% reasonable. I think it's 100% logical and it really could happen. Um, but I mean, I guess we, we're going to have to wait and see. But I think the magnitude of what Bitcoin is, I mean, it suggests that we could potentially see this happen. But yeah, let's dive into it. Here's my macro Bitcoin forecast. It's 21 years. Goes out to the year 2045. What do I think will happen? Well, I've got a bear case and a bull case. But what I think will happen is that 55% ARR goes to 50%, 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20. It's between 50 and 20. It'll gradually decelerate till it's growing about twice as fast as the S&P index. And at that rate, Bitcoin's $13 million a coin in the year 2045, $13 million. It could be, It could be a $3 million bear case. It could be a $49 million bull case. But what is Bitcoin? 7% of the world's assets then. MicroStrategy founder. So for him to say literally, I mean, his bull case is, is ridiculous. His bull case is very ridiculous, but the value in Bitcoin could be that it, it really could. And we're starting to see signs of this by how seriously it's starting to be taken because nobody was, was taking things seriously when um, Da Vinci was talking about getting it at a dollar. Like when, like the thing is you always doubt it because it seems like it's, it's hard to wrap your mind around. But when you start to understand the, the true value of this and how now the governments are starting to take it very seriously, they're coming down you know, um, SEC is involved trying to like come after it. Like it's a lot of stuff going on that points to, OK, this is a serious thing that's going to be here and it could be the future currency of the world. And if that happens, um, amazing things does happen with Bitcoin. So, I mean, this this is this is interesting. And executive chairman Michael Saylor has delivered another super bullish price prediction for Bitcoin, the world's largest cryptocurrency by market cap. While speaking before thousands of attendees at the Bitcoin 2024 conference in Nashville on Friday, Saylor gave his macro Bitcoin forecast for 2045, giving a bear case, a base case, and a bull case for the leading cryptocurrency. In 21 years, Saylor expects Bitcoin's price to appreciate by at least 4,300% from its current price of $68,000 to $3 million per coin. That's the bear case. Saylor's base case for Bitcoin is that it hits $13 million by 2045, a 19,000% price explosion from current prices. This will put Bitcoin's market cap at $280 trillion, a 280... And I've said this for a long time. I'm not a huge numbers guy. I'm not a huge math guy. But the last time when the dot-com bubble came, we started to see 
at certain points in history, we see market caps go from the millions, million being the the low, the the the, the standard high. Then we start to see something push it up to billions. Now we're peeking into the trillions. Now with AI technology, all of this stuff, this I believe is exactly what does push us into, you know, the next level of market caps. So I'm not some genius that can sit here and point out and analyze all the numbers and go through this stuff. I just, I, I simplify things very simple to a way that I can understand and digest things. Like you start talking too many numbers, throwing too many terms, I'll get lost. What I understand personally as an investor, and this is how I invest, I invest for dummies, <laughs> you know, like this is how I've been successful with my investments that I've been successful in. Like it, it's very, very dummy proof, my investment strategy. It's like at certain points in time, things have moved these caps. Is this, is this something that I think has the potential to move this cap to that type of extent? It is technology like what's going to advance things faster where's the money going to go outside of technology like that this this is technology has done it before and now we have the blockchain and technology which just a, a, a basically tech supercharged so i believe that will be the next thing that gets us over to the to the next to the next level of our economy so yeah i mean we're gonna we're gonna see how it plays out but yeah that's my that's my perspective the x increase from the current 1.3 trillion dollar market cap with Saylor's predictions, Bitcoin will easily be able to surpass the market capitalization of some other asset classes, including gold and art. According to the renowned business executive and entrepreneur, the global economy struggles because we are relying upon imperfect assets and imperfect systems to store capital. Saylor began his speech by discussing the useful life of various asset classes, including equities, collectibles like Ferraris, real estate, and government bonds. He gives various examples of physical assets that have failed the test of time through the years. He cites the example of King Ranch, one of the oldest ranches in the U.S. with about 171 years of history, explaining that tens of thousands of other ranches were founded in the same period, or even before that, are nowhere to be found today. Entropy is diluting the value of their physical assets, Saylor explained, adding that war, famine, and catastrophe are other factors that devastate the values of physical stores of value over time. However, all of these issues are inconsequential when investing in Bitcoin. According to Saylor, Bitcoin held- I never thought about that. I never thought about that because we do, real estate has been killing it. Real estate is one of those things that everyone wants to really go for, but you never know what's going to happen. Like it, what something that is warproof, obviously you got to make it out. If you <laughs> like, you got to be, you got to survive if something like that happens. But what happens when a bunch of, you know, your land is, is hit by some, some madness. I mean that, that it does lose its value or it could potentially not even exist. So yeah, or no one wants to live there. Like so many things could happen to physical property. People are the logic that people are always going to need somewhere to live. That is true, but you never know, um, what could happen but what could happen digitally is it's not very likely like it's not it's not nothing could really happen with things stored digitally and in perfect systems or as perfect as possible systems yeah you know so this is a good perspective i never really thought of that way with a custodian could have a useful life of up to 1000 years and bitcoin that is self-custodied could have a useful life of 10,000 years this is why sailor continues to maintain his super bullish outlook on the leading cryptocurrency which he predicts could someday climb as high as $49 million per coin. As we bring you clips from Michael Saylor's powerful presentation at the conference, please take a little time to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Everything you do helps with the YouTube algorithm and immensely contributes to the channel's growth. Thank you and enjoy the video. Bitcoin's immortal, immutable, and immaterial capital. And I use that in this sense, it's, it's got an infinite lifespan. It's not being attacked by the forces of weather and entropy and inflation. It's immaterial in the sense that it's not in the physical world. It's not, it's not suffering from all of those parade of horribles that are the scourge of financial and physical assets. And it is the solution to our economic dilemma. The transformation of our capital from financial and physical assets to digital assets, it solves the problem that we're all facing. Now, how long lived is Bitcoin? Well, take your Bitcoin and put it 
at scale with a custodian, an institutional grade custodian, you pay 10 basis points. You know, by the, you know, the first law of money, that means you're going to last 1,000 years. The custodian might not last 1,000 years, but that doesn't matter because you can move the Bitcoin every year or every decade, and you can stay one step ahead of the custodian's failing. You can't teleport a building. You can't teleport the King Ranch. You know, uh, and so Bitcoin is that is that thing that you can move. Say you custody your Bitcoin, you can self custody your Bitcoin for about one basis point a year, assuming you buy good hardware wallets and signing devices and spend a day a year to keep track of it. Now you've got a 10,000 year asset, and what happens if you give it to the AI? Well, an AI or a computer program can maintain those private keys for the cost of electricity. You've got a 100,000-year asset. The AIs are going to want the Bitcoin. If they have a choice between owning the Bitcoin and owning the ranch in Texas or owning the bar of gold or owning the Argentine peso, it's pretty obvious what they're going to want, and you can see here why they're going to want it. Digital assets are in a class all their own. When you compare them to all the other assets that you can use for capital preservation, you can see they're off the scale. Everything else is living in the domain of 30, 40, 50 years, and, and you're in the domain of 1,000 to 100,000 years. It's a breakthrough in capital preservation, but it makes it a revolution in economics. If you would be, if you would be rich, trade wisely. And here's a very simple principle. Trade temporary for permanent. Trade, you know, trade your ice cream cone that's melting for the peso, the peso for the dollar, the dollar for the land, and the land for the Bitcoin. Trade the currency for capital. Trade something fragile for something resilient. Trade something local for something global. Trade something physical for something digital. Trade the security. It's, that's dope. It's, it's always a mindset of like elevation and thinking what's next level from where you're at. And I think a lot of people don't have the freedom to really think like this. When, when you get to a status and level that, that he's at, like when you have the wealth, you have time to read more, study and think, you start to unlock perspectives that may not be normal to you right now because you have bills to pay. You have things to take care of. You don't think like this because you don't have the time to sit around reading digesting all this information and then stuff like this isn't really what gets spread around and goes viral like what's going to be going viral is a freaking streamer doing something ridiculous and that's what you'll see if you just picked up your phone and go to social media you're not really being able to see the information that he's diving into studying looking at starting to pick up on patterns that's been happening for the last hundred thousand plus years that maybe no one else is speaking about. It, it's it's out there, the information and stuff that you can find, but who has time to be looking that up? You more, li more than likely see what the algorithm is showing you and what the algorithms usually show you is not stuff like this. Even if you're into the bi business algorithm, it's gonna show you the most motivational speeches and stuff like that. So when people are taking the time to find this type of research and information and they have the freedom to do that, I think that it kind of gives you a shortcut into understanding perspectives. You can do your own due diligence, backtrace it and make sure the facts and the information that's being told to you isn't complete nonsense. But if it's not complete nonsense, that means the conclusion that you just heard, you can now factor that in and decide if you believe something like that or if you believe that even if it fails, like if he's wrong and Bitcoin is, is now worth a million dollars in the next 20 years, is is that worth it? Where you can buy it now for... 70k and hold it for 20 years and now each one is going to be worth a million like even if it fails and, it, and, it, and that's what it hits that's still that's still life-changing so yeah i mean it's just all about perspective all about perspective and all about the information security for the commodity trade the commodity for the scarcity you can't go wrong moving in that direction so let's talk about some great trades in history some trillion dollar trades the Dutch understood naval power. They, they understood ships. They had thousands of them. They bought the best port in the New World for a couple of hundred dollars in plastic and textile trinkets. And that's worth two and a half trillion dollars today. Okay? It's, it was an investment that's returned 6% for 398 years straight. It, it's a 10.5 billion X return. And if you think about it, you're like, why, why would I actually give up the best port in America for a bunch of textiles and plastic and glass? 
But the people that sold the thing to them didn't understand naval power. If you don't appreciate the reason you're going to want the property, you won't value the property. During his presentation, Saylor pointed out that there are $900 trillion of wealth stored in physical and financial assets across the globe. However, a very large percentage of these assets are based on 20th century ideas and 20th century technology, with only a tiny, hardly noticeable percentage stored in a 21st century technological innovation that represents true scarcity. At the moment, Bitcoin's 1.3 trillion market cap represents only 0.1% of the global financial market. By 2045, Saylor estimates it would have grown to 2% in the bear case, 7% in the base case, and 22% in the bull case. Saylor also differentiates between the $450 trillion in assets held for utility and the $450 trillion in long-term capital store of value, estimating how much it costs the world to hold these assets because of the constant devaluation of fiat currencies. Here are more clips from Saylor's presentation. How much is digital capital worth? Take the $450 trillion, multiply by 3%, that's your entropy cost or your inflation cost. It costs the world $13.5 billion a year to take, to take all of those parade of horribles when they're trying to preserve their wealth. If you put a 20 P to E on it, like you value a company or a long duration bond, that's worth $270 trillion. So digital capital is worth 10, 20, 15 trillion a year, and it's worth hundreds of trillions of dollars. Reality check. Is he full of BS? Well, digital capital is returning 55% for the past four years. Financial capital, the best in the world, is the bond. It's minus 5%. Imagine capitalizing your company or your country on a minus 5% instead of a plus 55%. It's obviously working. And now let's come back to my chart here. Global wealth, we can look at it like this, and we see the little Bitcoin you know, square in the left corner. But what's happening? Here's my macro Bitcoin forecast. It's 21 years. Goes out to the year 2045. What do I think will happen? Well, I've got a bear case and a bull case. But what I think will happen is that 55% ARR goes to 50%, 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20. It's between 50 and 20. It'll gradually decelerate till it's growing about twice as fast as the S&P index. And at that rate, Bitcoin's $13 million a coin in the year 2045. $13 million. It could be It could be a $3 million bear case. It could be a $49 million bull case. But what is Bitcoin? 7% of the world's assets then. What about the rest of the assets? Well, I actually think that AIs and technology are going to revolutionize tech. We had no companies worth a trillion. Then we had a bunch of trillion dollar companies. You're going to see more because you're going to see companies with 100,000 AIs and no employees, and they're going to do the work of companies that used to have 100,000 employees. You're going to see mega corps develop, you know, shipping robots and self-driving cars and a company that gives a personal physician to a billion people without... I mean, we can already see this happening. Like, even if you're in something like social media, because that's the business that I'm in. Like you can see how social media is changing your business when you start to use AI versus if you're not using AI. And there's people who aren't using it doing way more work than the people who are using it. And the people who are using it are seeing more results, even though other people may be necessarily working harder. So when you're when you're actually implementing some of this stuff, seeing how it's changing your life, seeing how it's changing your business you you understand what's coming like when you start to look around stores and you start to look around um um restaurants and you see the food now starting to be carried and delivered by robots and it knows how to go to the right table it knows how to avoid people not bump into people it's you know it's doing a good job you sit the food on it and it takes it right over to the table like why would they keep hiring people to do stuff like this so when you see ai starting to really get rid of things slowly slowly over time you can see how this this is really going to change change the future now obviously it's scary it's scary territory but at the end of the day the only way to protect yourself against what could potentially go wrong with ai is to get yourself in a position where you're you have some some good money you have some good money and i mean you're prepared like at the end of the day 
AI has been built. It's starting off. You, you can't stop it. So being against it ain't going to do anything. You can be against it and broke, but what the heck can you do about it if you're against it? I'd rather be against it and rich than to, to be against it and in a situation where I can't do nothing. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I worry about the doomsday case of AI, but at the end of the day, I'd rather, it's, if it's going to come, it's going to come. I'd rather face it with the finances and resources to be able to take that type of problem on than to, you know, be trying to struggle against it with nothing, you know. Without any doctors on the payroll. So clearly equity is going to grow fast. Gold's going to get demonetized. Land will be less monetized. But look, here's the future in 2045. Doesn't look that revolutionary. It looks like today. It's just that Bitcoin is visible on the chart to you. When Bitcoin is visible, that's going to be the base case. Now, what are the implications of this? How do you make money? Well, let's talk about individual Bitcoin strategy. What should you do? Uh, make Bitcoin your primary treasury asset. Convert your excess earnings to Bitcoin. Utilize subsidized credit. If the, if the government will loan you money, borrow the money at cheap rates and buy Bitcoin and find a tax efficient way to invest the Bitcoin. What shouldn't you do? Don't quit your day job. Don't lose your focus on Bitcoin. Don't use margin loans and trade with leverage. You get wiped out while you're asleep on a Saturday night. That's not good. Good, 30-year loan for 3% backed by the government on your land. Bad, overnight 10x leverage. In other news, Florida-based digital asset technology company Marathon Digital recently announced the purchase of $100 million of Bitcoin and the decision to adopt a full HODL strategy going forward. In a tweet put out on Thursday, the cryptocurrency mining firm said, Today, we are announcing that Marathon has purchased $100 million worth of BTC, and effective immediately, we are once again adopting a full HODL strategy. In another statement, the Florida-based firm revealed, It currently holds over 20,000 Bitcoin on its balance sheet, worth over $1.3 billion at current prices. According to the statement, Marathon also plans to keep all of the BTC that it mines as it adopts a full hold on for dear life, HODL approach towards its Bitcoin treasury policy. Fred Thiel, the firm's chairman and CEO, said the full HODL strategy reflects the company's confidence in the long-term value of Bitcoin. We believe Bitcoin is the world's best treasury reserve asset and support the idea of sovereign wealth funds holding it, Thiel said, according to a press release. We encourage governments and corporations to all hold Bitcoin as a reserve asset. Saylor has reacted to Marathon's news, urging Thiel to purchase even more Bitcoin for the mining company. Marathon is the latest in a string of companies in and out of the United States that are adopting a Bitcoin strategy to save their assets from fiat debasement. Saylor believes many other companies, including multi-trillion dollar tech firms like Microsoft and Apple, will make similar announcements in the years ahead as Bitcoin becomes more widely accepted. Do you agree with Saylor's $13 million prediction for Bitcoin by 2045? Please share your thoughts. I think that it's slowly, it's slowly happening. Bitcoin is slowly becoming the, the trusted thing um, and people are starting to realize the need for it. I think that a lot of us were ahead and we know, we understand, and a lot of people are jumping aboard. Um, and I think people think too short term when it comes down to Bitcoin. Bitcoin is one of those assets that you buy, hold, and you just leave it alone. You don't touch it. You just keep buying, keep accumulating. Um, at least that's my own personal strategy. Like you just just keep buying and accumulating and sl slowly it'll change your life. Um, it may not change it right now. Now you you can take plays and gambles on stuff that was sh more short term, like within the next couple of years or whatever. But um, yeah, when it comes down to Bitcoin, you want to be getting your hands on it. And I mean, it's it's going to it, it's going to do some crazy things, I believe. And it's starting to be legitimized by the government and um, these big tech companies starting to, you know, add this to their reserves and add this to their strategy. So, yeah, that being said, let me know what you all think and how you all feel about it down below in the comments section. Um, that's pretty much it, y'all. I'm going to keep I'm going to keep you all updated with everything happening on Bitcoin. But yeah, for now, um, yeah, be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe and yeah, catch you all later. Peace out.